Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be sharing all of the crochet wearables that I have made. So I have been crocheting about 10 years now and for the first several years, actually up until about a year ago when I started this channel, I primarily made simple things like hats and scarves and dishcloths and um, I've made like a, a cell phone little pouch before. Um, I've made a couple blankets um, and stuff like that. But to be honest, I never really had a lot of confidence in my skills. Um, I'm not really sure why, uh, but prior to starting this channel, I would crochet pretty consistently, um, you know, for a couple weeks. I'd get really excited about a project, and then I would kind of get quickly burn out, burnt out, and I would not crochet for weeks or even a few months. Um, but when I started this channel about a year ago, um, I had really, really just fallen in love all over again with the art of crochet. Um, and so I started to branch out and try more challenging patterns or more time intensive patterns. And I really started gaining a lot more confidence in my skills. Um, and in turn, that kind of fueled the fire all over again um, to where now I'm just obsessed with crochet and I crochet pretty much every single day. <laughs> so I'm here to show you the six wearables that I have made in the last year. The first item that I'm going to show you is the very first wearable that I ever made. It is a bathing suit cover up. And I made it last year um, in the summer of 2022. Um, we were about to go on a trip to Orlando. Um, and so I made it for that trip. Uh, funny enough, I only wore it one time while we were there because I was too afraid to mess it up and get like sunscreen all over it. Um, and so it really hasn't gotten a lot of use. But it did start my obsession with making clothing. Um, it is a very addicting thing once you start to make your own clothing. It's just so fun uh, to be able to customize your own clothes and pick whatever colors you want, whatever texture of yarn that you want. Um, and so I'm definitely hooked and will continue to make wearables forever. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and get into it. Here is the first item and I will be linking all of the pattern links in the description. So if you're interested in making any of these, you can. Um, so here's the first one. This is the swimsuit cover up and I used the Sugarwell cotton from Hobby Lobby, the Yarn Bee brand. I don't know what color this is. Um, probably just like teal or something like that. I'm not sure if they still carry this color, but this was a very fun pattern to make. It was supposed to be more of an oversized fit, um, but I didn't make it oversized enough. <laughs> so it is not quite oversized. I'm not gonna be trying this one on for you today. I will be trying on the other ones for you. Um, but if you would like to see how this one looks on, I will link a video below where I show you what it looks like on. Um, so you can get a better idea if you're interested in making this. But I ended up having to add some length onto the bottom so you can kind of see there where I originally stopped and then decided to add more length um, because I wanted it, you know, to cover all areas well. Um, I did add this cute little tassel. She had tassels on hers as well, but I did mine a little bit differently. I made mine a little bit bigger. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but this, there we go. The tassels kind of lace up the sides so you only seam it up to about this point. And then um, I laced it up with that tassel. And so it's really, really cute on. So definitely go check out that video. It is an older video, so I'm not gonna promise that the quality is great, um, which still the quality is not that great. 
<laughs> I don't have a camera or anything, um, so I still film on my phone. So the quality hasn't changed a whole lot, but it is an older video. So yeah, there is the first crochet wearable that I've ever made and the one that started the obsession. <laughs> the next item that I made right after this one is a tank top. And this is supposed to be sort of like a cropped tank top. Now, I, I personally don't show my stomach when I wear my clothes, so I made mine fit me right here at the waist. Um, I did mess up a little on this. This was a little more challenging. You know, I think just because it was a new skill, the body of the project was easy, but I somehow kind of goofed it up along the edges um so it doesn't look great you can see there that it's uneven i probably could go back in and add another row another round of like single crochet or something just to make it more smooth but i'm probably not going to do that to be honest um the yarn that i used for this i believe is called the yarn b yarn topia yarn um it is a very silky soft yarn sort of like Karen Simply Soft. Um, I can't remember if it's a four or a three weight because it's been a while since I've made this, but um, yeah, it's very nice. It's very, very soft, very silky feeling. So I do really, really love this for clothing. So I could definitely see myself using a yarn like this again for clothing. I think it'll hold up very well also, and it has a really good drape to it. Um, so yeah, so I will try this one on for you. Uh, to be honest, I've never wore this one out um, just because I don't necessarily love the way that it looks on me. Um, it's just kind of boxy, um, so it doesn't give me a whole lot of shape. And the armholes here are a little bit big, so they do hang down. Um, I am wearing a sports bra with it, so it's going to look kind of funny. Uh, because you're going to see the sports bra here in the back, but just try to ignore that. Um, but this is an item that I think I need to start wearing with some of my cardigans. I think that it will be a really good layering piece. So I definitely need to start pulling this out of my closet and using it in that way. So I'm going to put this on and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so here is what the tank top looks like. I'm going to back up so you can see it. Hopefully you can still hear me well. Again, ignore the, the sports bra there, <laughs> but here's what that looks like. And again, it's, it's okay on me. It's just boxy, so there's just not a lot of shape there. It does feel very nice and silky soft against my skin. So I definitely would love to make some more wearables with this yarn. Um, I'm going to show you here in a little bit a couple cardigans that I've made with some acrylic yarn. Um, one in particular, and I'm starting to realize that maybe just regular acrylic is not the best option for clothing because it pills. Um, so I think using a no-pill acrylic or um, a cotton would be great for wearables. Um, or something that already has a little bit of texture to it, or like this silky smooth yarn here that I think would be a little more resistant to peeling. So yeah, I definitely want to try and make some more wearables with this yarn. But this was definitely a learning experience, definitely not the best wearable I've made, but a great uh, learning experience. The next item that I have to show you, I'm actually gonna try on over this tank top. Um, because I think that, as I said before, this would be a great layering piece for me since I don't really like the way it looks on just by itself. So here is my very first cardigan that I ever made. It is using the Karen Ogo Halo. I do have a video where I kind of review this yarn um, that I will link below. But I do really love this. The Halo yarn is so, so, so soft and so nice. And this is what I was talking about with yarn that already has a little bit of the fuzzies and the texture on it. This obviously is perfect for clothing also because you're not going to notice any pilling that happens because it's already super fuzzy. <laughs> um, so this yarn 
the ogo form which you will see if you watch that video i don't love that format it didn't work out very well for me but i love this yarn um the halo yarn is just so amazing and it, it is like the most perfect ombre i've ever seen in uh any yarn so I definitely want to use it again and make something that showcases that ombre because this pattern did not. <laughs> because it was worked in panels and you sewed everything on um, and I didn't color control it at all so it ended up being color block style which I really do like so that is good but you can see here like it has a lighter colored sleeve um, a medium brown panel on this side and then you have a little bit of a lighter panel on this side and a dark sleeve and then the back is all dark um, but yeah I really loved making this pattern it's called the Delaney cardigan and the designer used velvet yarn for hers um, so here is what this one looks like on I have wore this quite a bit um, to church but the thing is please encourage me a little bit guys because all these wearables especially the ones I've wore the most um, the cardigans I've never washed them because I'm so scared that something is gonna happen to them now I know obviously I'm not I wouldn't dry them but I'm just even scared to wash them <laughs> like I just put so much time and effort into them and I love them so much that I would be so sad if anything happened. So if you've washed your wearables, please comment below and let me know it's going to be okay. <laughs> or if you have any tips on how to make sure that it stays, you know, nice and doesn't, nothing happens to it, definitely let me know. But anyway, I love this cardigan. Now, the color block style is out of my comfort zone. This is not something I would normally wear, but I really love this. Um, and it's so soft. It is so warm. Whenever I see these little fuzzies, it, it immediately makes me think it's going to be itchy, but it's not. This is so nice against my skin, and I really, really love it. I did mess up on the cuffs. Um, a little bit, but thankfully you can't tell, especially because it is a halo yarn. Um, so let me back up so you can see the rest of it. So here is the back and the side, and I really love the way this fits. And actually, it looks really good. I have a mirror right there. <laughs> it looks really good, I think, with this tank top. What do you guys think? So that is crochet wearable item number three in my first cardigan. Um, so yeah, I love this. Once I made that cardigan, I became obsessed with cardigans. So the rest of the wearables you're going to see here are all cardigans. So this is crochet wearable item number four. This is the Stony Shore cardigan by Evelyn and Peter here on YouTube. She has some great YouTube tutorials for a lot of different clothing items. And I just love this so much. She uses these awesome little pebble stitches, which I had never used before. And she included these cuffs in the pattern. Also, the ribbing at the bottom, I think, just adds so much to this pattern. And then she also includes pockets. So this is the only cardigan that I have that has pockets. Um, and I love them. And the technique that she used was really neat. I really like that. So let me try this one on for you guys. This is definitely the cardigan I've wore the most. It is oversized and soft and warm and I just love this. I love that it has a lot of those pops of color in there but it is still sort of neutral because of it being primarily gray. So this yarn is the Lion Brand Heartland yarn in the color Mount Rainier Tweed and this is such an awesome pattern. Now, this is the cardigan I was talking about that I wish I would have not used a regular basic acrylic yarn. I wish I would have used a no-pill acrylic or a low-pill acrylic or something like that um, because it is starting to peel really bad. And it's so sad. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if you'll be able to tell... You can tell a little bit, like right here, there's some peeling going on. It's really bad here um, in the front. I don't know if you can see that very well. 
but um it's just starting to feel really really bad and I'm so sad about it because I love this so much and I actually completed this right in time for my one year YouTube anniversary and I thought it was really fitting because it has all the little tweed pieces in there that kind of look like confetti or sprinkles or something like that sort of like for a celebration um so I just love this and I really hope that it holds up for a while if you guys have any tips on how to fix pilling on a crochet wearable definitely let me know um, but yeah, so here's a better view of it. Um, I love that it's oversized. I love the pockets. Here's the back. I love the ribbing at the bottom. So this is definitely one of my most worn and most loved cardigans that I've made. Crochet wearable number four. Okay, this next item is again a cardigan, um, crochet wearable item number five, and it is a hexagon cardigan. Um, you guys have heard me talk about these a lot lately. I have made this one and another one, which I will show you. This pattern is by Craft in a Cuppa. She has an awesome tutorial. And these hexagon cardigans are just so addicting and so fun because they're just so customizable. So all you do is make two granny hexagons, you join them together, and then you add length for the sleeves, length at the bottom, and some rows around the neckline and front of the cardigan. Well, actually it goes all the way around the whole perimeter of the cardigan. Um, but you can just customize this with so many different types of yarn, so many different color combinations. You can leave the sleeves open and flowy like I did on this one, or you can cinch them like I did on my other cardigan. You can leave it more cropped, or you can add a lot of length. I mean, there's just so much that you can do, um, and it's just, there. it's so fun to play around with. So this is the Sugar Wool Cotton in the color Honey It's Homemade. I do know the last I checked that this color is still available at Hobby Lobby. And it is so nice and lightweight. It's a three-weight cotton, and so I just thought this would be great for spring and early summer. And I really love this. The colors are just really beautiful. Um, I should have added a couple more rounds, I think, on the sleeves. Uh, it, they look fun, but I definitely feel like I could have added a couple more rows there. Um, and then I could have probably added a couple more rows here on the on the bottom of the cardigan because I don't know if you can tell but it does kind of stick out there in the back just because of the structure of the cardigan it tends to do that if it's not um, long enough so I should have added a few more rounds there but I do really like it and I, I, I think it looks good the way that it is so I may or may not do that eventually in the future probably not <laughs> but I do really love this it's lightweight and just really nice on the skin. Again, the cotton yarn I think is more durable um, for a wearable and the drape of course is amazing. So I hope you guys like this one. It was super fun to make and started my obsession with hexagon cardigans. <laughs> okay, so the last crochet wearable item I have to show you, item number six in my most recent make is this hexagon cardigan right here. It's the same pattern. I just played around with different colors, a different type of yarn, and just um, did a few things differently. But it totally changes up the look of the, of the cardigan. And that's what I was saying with these hexagon cardigans. It's just so fun to play around. You use the same pattern, but she gives you so many options to customize. It's just so awesome. So the last time I showed you this, um, I was not completely done with it. I was almost done, but it is finished and I wore it to church on Sunday and I'm in love with it. So again, though, I'm a little kind of kicking myself that I used regular acrylic just because, again, I don't want it to start peeling really super bad, but I'm hoping that this yarn might be a little better about it than the Heartland yarn. So I used the, I love this yarn in ivory for the ivory pillar, and then I used, let's see, um, one, two, three, four, five different colors of the Big Twist Party yarn and just kind of alternated them in a pattern. So I just kind of winged it on how I wanted it and took inspiration from the tutorial designer. 
Um, she did hers completely different colors, but the way that she arranged them, I kind of used that as inspiration. I hope that makes sense. So I did wider bands of color here, and then when I got to the sleeves, I did smaller bands of the color, and then I did cuff the, this, this cardigan. And then on the bottom, I did the same thing with using um, smaller chunks of color. And then on the outside, I ended up doing two rounds of that orange color. And then I did a round of the purple because that was my favorite color of the party yarn. I was going to finish it off with a uh, one more row of ivory. And I may still do that, but I do like the way it looks now. So let me try this one on and show you. And again, I think this one is actually going to look really good with this tank top because it has, you know, that, that same sort of color in there. So I will say I got to be careful with this one because it gets caught on the hanger really easy just because of the gaps in the granny stitches. So I have to be really careful. <laughs> Definitely don't want anything happen to this one. So here is this one and I love it so much. I love the sleeves and they're just really tight and secure. Um, and I like how cuffing them makes sort of this cute little puff sleeve here. I don't know if that's what you call it. Balloon sleeve. I don't know. But um, I just really love that style. Let me back up so you can see the whole thing. So I made this one a little bit longer than the other one. And I really like the length of this one. So it lays a lot more flat in the back. So yeah, I really, really, really love this one. I would have to say that this one is probably one of my favorites. I do love that Stony Shore cardigan so much, and the Halo cardigan is so nice and cozy, but this is just so up my alley. It is so colorful and so different and unique, and I love that. So I love that crochet gives you freedom to express your personality through your clothing, um, and how cool is it to get a compliment on a clothing item and be like, yeah, I made this. <laughs> so that is just so much fun. And also, you know, crochet is an art and to be able to wear your art on your body is the coolest thing ever. So I've definitely fallen in love with making um, wearables. And if you've never tried a wearable, if you're intimidated by it, I would definitely um, encourage you to try it. And, you know, you, you will probably mess up. It probably won't be perfect, but that is how we get better, obviously, is to continue to practice. And each time that I have made a new wearable, I have gained more confidence in my skills. Um, and so I know that you can, you can do it too. Um, even if you're a beginner to crochet, there's so many beginner patterns that you can make um, of different wearables. And it's the perfect time right now, ex ex at least in the U.S. where it is getting warmer. Um, you can start with a smaller project like a tank top that won't take quite as long as something like a sweater or a cardigan. So I have yet to make a sweater. So I'm definitely um, going to be making one of those sometime this year, probably closer to fall, obviously, because it is definitely not sweater season anymore in Kentucky. <laughs> so, um, but you can definitely stay tuned for that. I'm excited to make a sweater. Um, I'm also really wanting to try to make some kind of crochet shorts or skirt or pants or something. That is a goal of mine. Don't know when that'll happen, but I'm definitely wanting to try that out. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video, seeing all of the crochet wearables that I have made so far. And it's been a it's been a journey for sure getting to this point. It took me 10 years to make one, but I'm so glad that I did and now I'm obsessed. So you guys can definitely um, look forward to seeing a lot more of this on this channel. Let me know in the comments. Um, do you love making wearables? Have you been intimidated to make one? Um, has this video inspired you to try? I hope it has. And then the verse I want to read to you guys today is again out of the 100 Bible verses everyone should know by heart book and this is just so fun to just flip through here and just kind of open it up to a verse and they're just shorter and just um really rich though in the in the theology um i need to get back into this i have just had a lot more going on lately and so i haven't 
been able to dedicate or haven't carved out the time to dedicate to um, verse memorization, but I really, really want to. Um, but anyway, the verse I want to share with you today is so short, but it is so important and one that all of us should definitely know by heart and remember because this is one we can draw upon in some of the hardest times of our life. So Psalm 56, 3, and it says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. So as I said, super short, but powerful because we all are going to face times in this life where we're afraid, um, whether it be a diagnosis that we get or that one of our close family members get or our child or say one of our kids is having trouble in school or um, there's a hurricane coming, some kind of natural uh, weather or war or um, a loss of a job. Um, so many things can bring fear into our life and I know that I'm definitely prone to give in to fear and I, I have to constantly tell myself that I don't have to fear because even if I die, um, I know that I will be with the Lord and I have to trust his plan for my life so that no matter what happens, it's going to work out for his glory and our good. And he promises us that. And so I think we just all need to remember that when we're afraid, we can trust in the Lord. If you've given your heart to him, you've um, reached out to him and asked him to save you and you've accepted the sacrifice of Jesus's death on the cross for the penalty of our sin we are made right with God and therefore we can trust God because he is our father and so I really hope that that encourages you today and if you're facing something uh, a scary situation um, I pray that you will cry out to God and you will ask him to comfort you and give you peace and trust in knowing that he's going to work it out for your good and his glory so I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I can't wait to chat with you guys in the comments. May God bless you, and I'll see you super soon in the next one. Bye!